How you doing? I'm sitting here with Diamond Jim Tyler. Just finished up an awesome lecture here at U.S. Toy. Uh, how you doing, man? Awesome. That really was great. Like, really, I'm not, I'm not shining you on. Thank it was great. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, how you got started. Like, what was your first interest in magic? How did you get started? Well, um, I started playing with cards as a kid, but I saw J.B. Bobo. He came to my school when I was five years old. And so after seeing his show, I was like, I want to be that guy. I mean, he's hilarious. If you ever saw his show, he did the Texas, Arkansas school circuit. And then as a teenager, I found a magic shop and I bought everything they had. And the owner told me, you know, he said, you know, when you work here, you get a discount. And so I began working there to get the discount. And I worked there for seven years while I was in high school and college. And then I started doing, I actually did restaurant magic before I started working for the shop. And I did restaurant magic for 19 years straight, about eight shifts a week. And uh, yeah, so you working 16 hours a week doing just magic nonstop. You know, you get good. You learn lines. You figure out what works, what doesn't work, yeah. what resets, what doesn't. You know, yeah. so. So, uh, do you have uh, you? I know we all know you do close up. We did a lot of close up, but some stand up. I mean, do you have a favorite between close up, stand up, mentalism? I like to mix it up. Uh, I mean, mostly close up and stand up. Uh, I do a lot of corporate events and private parties, but. Um, yeah, some weeks I'm doing lots of birthday parties, and next week I'm doing trade shows and stand-up things. So it's nice to be diverse, and that's why I think I'm able to stay busy, always working, because I have different shows for different groups and situations. Yeah. Right. Um, so you're almost as old as me. Uh, probably I'm like an old-school guy, like books. Uh, well, it's not books. polite to ask <laughs> your age, so how much do you weigh? <laughs> I, I weigh I – w yeah, it doesn't matter. I weigh about 100 pounds, roughly. Okay. <laughs> that would you say um, I'm old school like started with books the, the question is always books over DVDs DVDs over books L thoughts on that uh, I think YouTube I think it's best to just upload people's DVDs and just download them for free that's that's what I recommend yeah, so uh, just find their material copy yeah, it just copy it every you know uh, no uh, I'm like you I prefer books and DVDs it's a nice visual art the great thing about books, everyone, you've, this has been said before, but you can, s when you read a book, you put yourself in the situation. It's how would I do this? But when you see it on YouTube or you see the video, you're more likely to emulate that performer. And I know emulate's a big word. You should never use a big word when you can use a diminutive one. Um, but that's the point I wanted to make. So. And so uh, you got a chance to actually walk around at U.S. Toy. I know it's kind of a weird time of year for this because it's, you know, it's getting Halloween. ready Halloween, so crazy I'm Halloween stuff. In a Halloween magic shop, so I understand this animal. You know, so yeah. So what would you think? Because this is like the biggest magic it's shop impressive. in the world. Yeah. It's yeah. impressive the square footage. Yeah. yeah. So sure. yeah, it's pretty. The nudity bothers me. I don't. I would like yeah, cut down. For. I mean, there's costumes everywhere. Put something on. Something on. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so maybe uh, if you just close us out with like one of your funny stories. Like I love some of the stories. Like we talked about card on ceiling. I like the 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 thing you told earlier uh, some some funny story that has happened to you because I love the stories that just like okay, never going to happen uh, again type story so here's one um, it's a company Christmas party I'm to do an hour of strolling magic and then do a 20 minute stand up show after doing the strolling they love me it's going great well just before I'm get up to do the show the president of the company says Jim I'd like to make an announcement before you go on I'm like you're the boss go ahead and he gets up and he says, and I'm like, what is he going to say, right? He says, as you know, my wife and I, Dorothy, we started this company 30 years ago. And much of the family and our friends work for the company. And recently, Dorothy passed away and said, tonight, I wanted to unveil a painting that I had commissioned done of Dorothy. So they well out this huge painting, life-size portrait. And it's covered with a black velvet cloth. And he unveils it. And he's like, y'all come up and take a look. And they form a line, and as they pass this, they're sobbing. It's like a funeral procession. They're like, Mom, <laughs> Dorothy, you know, they go back to their tear tears, screaming, you know, to their seats. And as soon as they all sit down, the DJ goes, and now for the magic <laughs> of Diamond Jim. And so I'm going to walk out literally in a funeral yeah. situation right. and do this. So luckily I had enough experience under my belt that I knew I needed to address the situation. So I lied. I said, you know, I understand Dorothy was a very sweet woman. I mean, she probably was. And I said, uh, you know, she'd want us to be happy tonight. So let's let's dedicate this to Dorothy. And so, so you know, I won a few of them back. 
but I was very rattled yeah. by all this. And I only had 20 minutes to do. And I think I had seven, maybe eight effects. And I do a lot in 20 minutes. And so the second routine in my act is a cut and restored rope trick. Trying to keep things upbeat and keep an eye contact going. While I'm cutting the rope, I also cut off the tip end of my finger because I'm moving fast, trying to keep things going. And I'd never cut myself like that before. I uh, cut off a big chunk. And so I can see a little bit of red, but the rope I was using with was red. So the blood, a little bit of blood that did come out, it was being absorbed by the rope. So they didn't know, but they knew I hurt myself when they saw me wince in pain. You cut part of your finger off, you're going to make a face. Right. And so, anyway, I continued doing the routine. The show must go on. And as soon as I put the rope trick away to grab my cards, it starts spraying. Oh. Blood spraying all over. Oh, man. And the audience is eating their dessert at this moment. And they're like, Not for long. <laughs> And so I'm like, so I'm just, I'm freaking out. I have a white jacket on. I don't know how to get blood on it, but I didn't. And so blood is gushing out of my hand. I'm trying to do a card trick now. And blood's just running and dripping. And the DJ noticed this. And luckily he noticed it as soon as I cut my finger. And so he went and grabbed some bandages, some Band-Aids. And as soon as he, I finished the card trick, he tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around. He handed me some bandages. I wrapped up my finger super tight, and I finished the show. And after the show, the lady said that hired me, she goes, I can't believe you kept going. <laughs> and she gave me a big tip that night. So you want to get a big tip, lop off your finger. <laughs> and uh yeah. That's actually very sound advice. I, I, I like that. I appreciate it. Well, that's it. DJ, you are the man. Great lecture. Thank you very much. All right, man.